and welcome everyone. I'm so, so excited to have the opportunity to talk to you today and to be part of the MADE Summit. I want to send out a huge thank you to Amar and the team at ZenMade. I know a lot of hard work goes into organising an event like this, so thank you. I also really want to thank each and every one of you for signing up to this talk and more importantly, showing up to learn today. It's so easy to sit around and complain about problems, get stuck in the rut of day-to-day -day business. Um, but the fact that you're here and taking action to improve shows you've really got what it takes to succeed. So thanks. Today, we are going to be talking about cleaner hiring and onboarding, which I know is a topic that can bring on feelings of incredible stress and anxiety in many cleaning business owners but it's something that's just so important to get right. If you're here today because finding and onboarding cleaners is something you have been struggling with, I just want to start by telling you that you are 100% not alone. It was pretty easy for me to choose my topic for the summit because as a business consultant, this is definitely the number one topic I get asked about and the biggest struggle for cleaning business owners worldwide. Owners are often finding it extremely hard to find quality people to onboard them in the right way and to just keep them motivated. But I'm here to tell you that with the right processes in place, it really shouldn't be so hard. So today what we'll do is we will step through the exact eight step process that we follow in my cleaning business and that I've refined over time um, and that I've also taught numerous other business owners to implement now in their businesses. I thought rather than using slides today, I will actually build out the eight steps here with you in Google Docs and that way I can also share my screen as I show you some of the tools we use day to day to simplify cleaner onboarding. Now just following these basic steps, will save you hours and hours of time each week. To give you an idea, uh, we are currently onboarding quality cleaners weekly and we spend roughly two hours each week. So that's right through from posting job ads, posting and reposting, managing applications, hosting the sessions, completing all the legal documentation and having those cleaners trained up and ready to go. So as you can see, you really can automate this process to save time if you're willing to think outside the box. I know you have also had the opportunity to listen to several talks over the past few days on sales and marketing. And of course, a solid sales system is critical to the success of any business and often the focus for business owners. But here's the thing, if your system stop there, at marketing, it will be very, very hard, if not impossible, to grow your cleaning business. So what I wanna do is show you a really simple example of what I mean. And I'll just jump over here into Google Sheets to do that. So let's just say your marketing efforts are currently attracting just one new client each week for the next year. 52 weeks in a year, that's 52 new clients, right? So just to keep it simple, um, obviously numbers vary from business to business, but this is just a really simple example to show you how much of a difference systems can make to growing your revenue. So we've got 52 new clients. Let's just say they each spend $200, right? Once. They spend $200 with your business once, so they've booked a once-off clean. You've added $10,400 so $10, to your revenue for the year. But over here what we have is if your client was so impressed by your cleaners, your well-trained cleaners, that you took those 52 leads and they still spent $200, per clean, but they booked with you 26 times. So you've kept them coming back once a fortnight for a year. Here's your revenue. 
See the difference? It's huge. So you can tweak these numbers. Your leads, you might bring in 500 a year. But still, if you keep those leads coming back 26 times a year instead of once a year, you can see the difference. Or even if you just kept them coming back once a month, there's the difference. Or even every second month. It's huge, right? And the way you're going to keep people returning to your business is by having solid systems and processes so you can deliver the same quality service each and every time. And this is why systems are so, so valuable, so valuable to your cleaning business. Now, like I said, you can go away and you can crunch these numbers. You can play with them as much as you like, but the outcome will be the same. This number here will always be higher if you can get the repeat work. And the way you get the repeat work is through systems. It's very hard to maintain consistency in your cleaning business without a solid hiring and onboarding process in particular because you won't be in control of the reliability and quality of service delivered by each of the cleaners you onboard. So you won't deliver the quality required to keep your clients coming back. And that will be the difference between these two examples. Okay, so now we'll go back to the, um, we'll put the 52 back here. But assuming your cleaning business is already attracting one new client per week, with your existing marketing methods, I want to ask you a really important question. So you're bringing in new leads. Are you growing month on month? If not, there is every chance it is because you do not have enough clients returning. So you need to increase this number here. What it means is that even by spending a fortune on trying to keep bringing in new clients all the time, you're actually not going to grow your business or ever really get ahead. There's an analogy I like to use with my clients and that is, it's the same as trying to fill up a bathtub without the plug-in. And who in their right mind would do that? So today what I wanna show you is essentially how to make sure you're not letting your customers that you've paid good money for to, to get those leads, how you're going to stop them from going down the drain with the bath water, from booking once and then never booking again. But in order to do that, we need to put the plug in. Now, in a business, systems and processes are the plug in your bathtub. This is something that Facebook ads, or the best SEO expert in the world cannot fix. So now you understand the importance of systems and the difference that they can make on your revenue. Let's get started building your hiring system. So we'll jump back over here, right? And I'm going to give you the steps. So step, we just click here. Step one is to review. So I want you to go back and review and refine your job advertisements. This is really, really important. And it really comes down to the quality of your ad copy. If you don't have well-written and thought out ads, chances are you just won't attract quality cleaners who are the right fit for your business. You need to ensure that you carefully craft your ad copy to attract not only lots of candidates, the right candidates. So what do I mean by this? Essentially what I mean is you wanna make sure that you're not only talking about the job benefits and why it's so great and wonderful to work with you. What you need to do is be realistic and include what a day in the life of a cleaner really looks like. This will ensure that the people applying are people who are truly prepared for what you expect. So what I'm saying is, yes, put in the benefits and what's great about working with you, but just make sure they know what the role really involves and that they're ready to handle it. You should think about your ideal cleaner. So this might be you. 
say you're still cleaning and you want to replicate yourself or you've got an existing cleaner who you've hired who's just amazing and you wish you had 10 of, right? I want you to write a list of what makes that cleaner great. What about them as a person? What about their work ethic? What do they do that's so great so that you know exactly what you are trying to replicate or who you're trying to replicate and make sure that this comes across in your advertisements and that you're posting in the right place where you can find those people. Okay, so that's step number one. It's really, really important that your job ad is clear and that it sets those expectations up front so that you're getting applicants who are going to be the right fit for the role. Step number two is to then set up a dedicated inbox to receive job applications and turn on your autoresponder. I love this step. Okay, so you've tweaked your job ad and the applications are rolling in Oh my gosh, they are flooding your inbox and you can't keep up. What I want you to do is set up a different inbox for job applications only. Then turn on your autoresponder. This step will make sure you're not manually reviewing each and every email and resume that comes in. Now, your auto reply should remind the candidate of your requirements you know, one year's experience, must have a police check, whatever your requirements are, um, you want to remind them of the requirements that were probably already outlined in your job ad and help them self-select into the next phase of your onboarding process. So what you're doing here is you're minimising the number of people who progress and the number of people that you need to manually make contact with. Now, personally, what I do is in my email reply, I remind candidates of the requirements and I say to them, look, if you meet these requirements, which I'm outlining again below, then I invite you to sign up for an information session. Yep, I invite all of them to an information session. If they believe they meet my requirements, then I invite them to come along. And this means I don't have to review a single email or resume until they have made an effort to physically show up to my session and find out more about the role. Now, this isn't to say that I'm not still going to check their resume at a later date, but what I'm doing is I'm turning the process on its head. So instead of reviewing the thousand applications that might have come in, I'm only going to review the ones of the people who bother to physically show up in the room for the information session. So that's that step, right. Step three is schedule regular, regular is important, group information or interview sessions. So in, probably information sessions if you're working with contractors, interview sessions if you're hiring employees. But you want them to be regular and you want them to be in a group format. So again, the important thing here is that the initial meeting with cleaners should always be in a group format. You should not be doing one-to-one -one interviews with cleaners unless it's after you've refined down to your top candidates. Now, the reason I suggest this is because if you haven't already, you will find that people are unreliable. So what happens is you set up your one-to-one -one interviews or your phone interviews and then people don't turn up or they don't pick up their phone. You end up playing phone tag. You end up wasting hours and hours of your precious time on candidates who were not really that serious in the first place. So if you host a group session, you minimise the time actually wasted. For example, you might have six people scheduled for a group session. Even if just one shows up, it was worth it. But if you had six separate interviews scheduled and you wiped out your whole day to make that happen and one showed up, you'll be pretty upset and I would be too. And look, I've been there. When I first started my cleaning business, that's what I did and that's what I thought would work and I wasted so much time. But instead of complaining about it and complaining about how the people were unreliable, I came up with a system which would mean they could not waste my time and that's what this blueprint is. So host group sessions and make sure you're hosting them regularly and not just when you're desperate to hire.
you should always have a little pipeline of people ready to go just in case people do let you down. Okay, so that's that. So step number four, make sure you set a clear agenda for your sessions. So you want to make sure you're running your sessions in a way um, where, again, only quality candidates are going to move forward and where it's structured such that you can make sure that you share all of that important information with them up front. So exactly what it's like to work with you, the key requirements, what are your expectations, ask questions that you want the answers to from your candidates um, and just make sure they're fully informed. Don't sugarcoat things. I hear so many people say to me, oh, yeah, but I make it sound really good because if I didn't, nobody would proceed. And I think, well, that's not good because if you, if you sugarcoat them into starting with you, soon enough they're going to see what it's really like and then they'll leave anyway, which is worse. So just be honest up front. Um, if, if we're not getting people wanting to go ahead, there's something else going wrong. Um, but you need to be honest up front about the role, absolutely. So that's step number four is know your agenda, know what you're going to be talking about at the session and make sure you really set those expectations from the start. Step number five is to lock in new candidates or new cleaners, I should say, fast. So the, the important thing here is I'm wanting you to make sure you are sealing the deal with your ideal candidates quickly. Um, firstly, really good candidates, if they're applying for different jobs, they'll be snapped up fast. The person who moves the quickest gets that contract locked in, gets the person onboarded and into work, they're going to get that cleaner. So you need to move quickly. The other thing is you shouldn't let people linger for weeks and weeks telling you they're going to get back to you or that they forgot. So what I recommend is you put a deadline on returning the documents and make sure they adhere to it. No ifs or buts. If they are serious about working with you and you've just got to put yourself in their shoes, uh, if you were serious about working with someone, you'd just get those documents back quickly, wouldn't you? And you'd be ready to start. You wouldn't linger and wait and not be sure. You, you'd just get it back. So what I'm saying is you shouldn't be chasing cleaners or outstanding documents ever. In fact, if you do, you're likely to be let down. So even if you think that they're the perfect person and you're desperate for cleaners, don't chase. Um, they're basically telling you, they're doing you a favour, they're telling you and you need to read the message. Um, they're not serious about the position and they're not serious about working with you, which is an absolute red flag right from the start. And like I said, what happens, people get desperate, they really, really need someone to start and they chase, but it never, ever works out well. So lock in the good candidates fast and don't chase up other candidates. Move to your next round of information session or interview and go again. Okay, step number six is to trigger your onboarding ideally your automated onboarding immediately. So by that I mean you've selected your candidates, um, they've completed their documentation, now let's activate them, let's get them on board and let's do it quickly so they can see that you're in control, you have a process, um, you have expectations and we're going to set that right from the start. Um, you want to have an email template ready Ideally as a canned response. So a canned response is something you can set up in Gmail. So basically just a template you can click on and use. If you don't know what a canned response is, just Google it and you'll be able to find a video on how to set one up. You shouldn't be writing the same emails over and over again. So canned responses are something that I use in various areas of our business so that we can just grab the template and click send rather than having to retype emails over and over again. And you want to make sure that that email is then the same for every cleaner that you onboard and it gives them uh, the specific instructions as to what is actually going to happen next and how they'll be receiving their training, which ideally should be an online induction or training portal, which you just give them the link to then and there. And so that leads us into step seven, which is to build 
an online portal to facilitate onboarding. I've got a bit of a spelling problem over here. So I'll fix that one up. So build an online portal to facilitate onboarding. This step alone, I'm going to put it in bold, will change your life. You take everything that's in your head that you would want to tell a cleaner. So imagine you're walking around with them on their first day. What do you want to tell them? You take all of that information and you put it into an online portal. And then when someone starts, you just send them the link. They read the documents, they watch the videos, they complete a quiz and it's done. And you haven't had to do anything. So what I want to do is just click quickly over and show you ours. This is what ours looks like. Basically, it's just like an online learning portal where they can click through the modules. At the end, they get asked a bunch of questions. If I'm happy with the answers, at the end of them answering all the questions, then they are onboarded into our system and allocated their first job. It's as simple as that. So basically, this is just your full detail training. Um, we know that every cleaner is onboarded in the exact same way, so there's no excuses. Um, they can't say things like, you didn't tell me this, and then you feel like you need to give them a second chance. You just know. All the information's there. It's all been given to them, and there are no excuses. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not going to potentially be doing practical on the job training but it means all the theory is out of the way so that when they turn up to their first job, instead of assuming they know nothing, you can actually be expecting them to jump in and start and you can sort of just quiz them as you go to make sure they have understood the training that's being delivered in your portal. Um, you should definitely try to have your training in an online format which you can just send the link to like this, it will just help you so much with consistency. And the, the amount of time it saves you is just unbelievable. Even with existing client, um, sorry, not clients, cleaners, if you're having problems, you can just refer them back and say, look, you need to look at this module of the training because that's where we went through this. Come back to me if you've got any questions. So you're not repeating the same stuff over and over and over again. It's huge. Okay, so that's the online portal. Step eight, build a virtual cleaner community. Okay, so again, this um, should be online. A good way to do this is just in a Facebook group, which you can add all of your active cleaners to. But basically what I'm saying is build a forum where your cleaners even if they work very independently, can see what the others are doing and they can engage so that you can drive accountability within your team. What it does is it, it just reminds them that there are other cleaners in your business. There's other high performing cleaners who they're up against. And this is a really good way to drive accountability, results and quality. Um, a big mistake I see my clients make is they let their cleaners know that they're completely reliant on one or two people. So even if they are being really difficult, they're unreliable, they're not doing a great job, they know they're going to get away with it because there's nobody else who can do the work. So this is really important. Don't let your cleaners know that you are reliant on any specific person. You need to make it clear that you're talking to cleaners at these information and interview sessions every week. You're talking to quality cleaners who are ready to work and the work's going to go to the best cleaners. So just make sure they're aware of each other. It's really important. Um, and in your group, what you can do is you can share things like wins for the week. If one particular cleaner is getting great feedback, share that into the group. Share training or tips or key information, team events, anything that's going on to build a bit of community, both from a, you know, a community relationship perspective so that the cleaners feel like they have a network but it also creates a level of competitiveness, which is really important to drive quality, um, friendly competitiveness. Um, one other thing I want to show you just quickly is how we actually keep track of all of this. So where are our candidates in terms of um, 
the cleaner pipeline and we use active campaign so we use active campaign deals and what happens is when someone signs up for a session so they don't enter this pipeline until they ha actually have signed up for a session we use zapier to talk to active campaign um, and they pop up in here to show us that they've signed up for a group session and that we need to send them a confirmation text prior and then we can just drag and drop them through each of the steps so if someone's attended a group session and we say yes they passed send them an agreement then my PA knows to move them here and then once that agreement's been sent she moves them here so we know we're waiting on their agreement once they've signed their agreement here and so on so we're just moving through the steps and this is really important um, just to make sure you stay organized and you know exactly where candidates are at each phase of the process so I thought that was an interesting little thing to show you and if you've got any questions about that feel free to reach out to me um, I know overall it does seem like a bit of a process to set up at the outset but the hours you put into this will come back to you 1,000 times over and more so once this is set up now like I said, we just run this like clockwork every single week and it takes us hardly any time at all. Um, I've systemized my entire business and it does run on autopilot with very little time for me each week. Um, if I choose to work, if I don't, things won't fall apart. And now I'm obviously all about processes and automation. I'm a process consultant, but if there is a single process you build in your cleaning business, I encourage you to build this one. Cleaner onboarding is something that takes so much time from people and it causes so much stress. And I can tell you through my own trial and error and seeing so many people struggle with the same thing, that the standard recruitment approach, it just doesn't work. The process we've been through today identifies cleaners who are generally, sorry, generally and genuinely interested in working with you without lifting a finger um, we found that with our business, we are now refining down to about 5% of candidates with basically no manual work because what's happening is they're actually self-selecting throughout our process. And I know that what this does do is it, it turns the traditional recruitment process on its head, but I'm telling you now that reviewing every resume, selecting your candidates for phone interviews, shortlisting for one-on-one -on -one and so on. It just does not work in this industry. It might work, but it will waste hours and hours and hours of your life. If you wanna get this right, you have to be ready to think outside the box. I've tested so many different formats to refine it down to this eight steps, and we really have nailed it with this process. It's simple and it works. And that's the case with most processes. The simpler, the better. You don't need to overcomplicate things. You just need to think about things in a different way. And if you follow these eight steps, I guarantee you will improve your hiring success rate and you will save so much time. Not only that, you can then take the time you save and you can go and spend it on activities that will actually help you grow your business. So focusing on your sales, focusing on your marketing, focusing on client retention, instead of focusing on all the problems and hiccups that are caused by bad hires. So that's why this is the first process I'd be dealing with. Um, if you found today helpful and you'd like more help with your systems and processes, um, I wanted to give you a few different ways to reach me. So you can email me here, amy at amycarris.com.au. Feel free to visit the Clean Ideas Academy. So I'll just jump over and show you. This is our homepage. Um, there's a few different courses that we have on offer to help with systems and processes, specifically for cleaning businesses. If you're interested in hiring, the A-Team project will be the one you would want to start with. And I have included um, a special offer for ZenMade customers and people who are on the Made Summit. If you jump in here and you just add coupon code ZenMade, 
it should give you $100 off the 18 project. And this is basically the detailed blueprint of the eight steps we've been through today. So if you're interested in learning more, you can do that here. But by all means, I mean, the steps that I've shared with you today should be a great place to start and should already save you so much time. And then the only other thing I just wanted to share was that I do have a free Facebook group with a community of nearly 500 other cleaning business owners where we support each other, share free tips and hints about how to um, grow our cleaning business. So if you're interested in joining that, um, it's Clean Ideas, Business Systems and Automation. Have a look for us. Join. We would love to have you there. Um, so, yeah, so thank you so much for taking the time to join us at the MAID Summit and for listening to my talk today. I hope I've helped you understand the importance of systems in your cleaning business and that the eight-step hiring and onboarding blueprint will be a step in the right direction to help you gain control of cleaner hiring into the future. If you want a copy of this document, you can just follow the link here and I think it will also be in the Made Summit portal so that you can click on it directly. Uh, and like I said, if you've got any questions, reach out to me via email. I'm always happy to help. Okay, have a great day, guys. Enjoy the other talks and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.